to today's episode from Field to Plate. It's summertime, garden time, and you won't know what that means, fresh veggies from the garden. I was lucky enough today to be able to stop by Fannin's Vegetable Market produce stand on the other side of West Liberty, going outside of it, and shop for some local vegetables. Um, got some nice tomatoes, corn, zucchini that we'll be using. Uh, Vidalia onion already trimmed it up, green peppers, and some nice new potatoes. We're going to do three dishes today for summertime. The first dish we're going to get started is a, uh, I caught my rustic potato dish. Simple, a little bit of center cut bacon, which I already got going. I wish y'all could smell that. It smells great. But when doesn't bacon smell good? Anytime. Um, some new potatoes roughly chopped up some bacon in it, salt and pepper, a little bit of onion. Throw it in the oven on 400 for about 25, 30 minutes, it's done. Simple, rustic potatoes that probably everybody's made at home, but it goes great with so many dishes and it really um, highlights the potatoes, and especially new potatoes, they're great. My grandmother used to always cut them in half and she would actually fry them in a pan just like this and they turn solid brown on one side and um, get real good you know get real good and done so what I want to do is mimic that one I want to actually transfer or bake into this pan because this is a skillet I want to use because it's already got a good coating of bacon grease in it um, our bacon is actually going to be used for a couple different dishes so to that, I'm going to add a little more bacon grease. That should be about do it. Okay. Our um, pan is on high. And I'm actually going to cut my potatoes. And you can hear them start searing now. And actually, what you can do is quarter them. I think that's what I'm going to do with this dish is make them in little quarters. That way the brown gets on more potato instead of just the bottom side. Makes it a little more browner. I'm going to do a mixture of red potatoes and white potatoes because uh, give it a little color and earthiness to that. And actually they have both in they have both in stock right now, both kinds of potatoes. Who doesn't like fresh vegetables of the summertime? Um, I can honestly, other than what bacon we have today, I'm fine with fresh veggies from the garden. Sometimes it's good to mix it up. We eat so much meat and stuff, which I'm a big meat eater, but sometimes it's just good to have a good vegetable dinner and good for your body, good for your mind. And I'll try to highlight some more veggies for saw here, because there's some people that doesn't like meat, you know, vegetarians or whatever, and there's nothing at all wrong with that. But we want to class some dishes so you guys get some recipes and shows that you might enjoy here. So if you don't like eating meat, just leave bacon out. Use olive oil, good go. It'll be good. So we want to get our potatoes frying up. We're gonna put all, most of them in there. You don't want to overcrowd it because that'll make them not cook well. But here's what I'm talking about. We want each side to get that little bit of brownness there on it. And that'll mimic what my grandmother used to make with new potatoes. And I can remember them being so simple and so good that there's a little crisp layer of brownness on them, a little bacon grease and salt and pepper, and that's it. Me and her sit down with some cornbread at the table and eat. Um, and she was a big mentor as far as cooking my life. Um, you know the saying, and kids don't do as much these days, but I'd actually sit on the back porch and we'd break beans all day. And I'd go over there every summertime when I was a kid. She'd actually watch me. And um, we'd make cream corn. Those that don't know, make cream corn. We'd actually just. Um, Sit there, cut it all off, scrape the cobs, get the milk out of it. I got, actually got my oven preheated to 400, 450 for this dish because you want to cook it on a higher heat. The crisp potatoes better. I want to take 
about half my bacon so in there. The rest of it's gonna go in our corn dish in a little bit. Maybe a little more than half. We don't want the bacon overpower or corn. Bacon ain't gonna overpower the potatoes. Y'all can hear it sizzle and be cooking. So, one last good stir on this. Let's add some salt, freshly ground salt. Don't be afraid to use salt and pepper. You want to taste it. You got high blood pressure, we can saw it out, I guess. And fresh cracked pepper, they're nothing better than fresh cracked pepper on a dish. Um, I can't, I mean, if you don't have a ground, pepper ground shaker, or a grinder, get one because you'll be wanting it. This is the pepper so much better. On my smoker at home, I actually smoke pepper corns. And I got two. I got one regular pepper corns. Then I got one that has smoked pepper corns. And it takes food to a whole other level. Easy, simple to do. Um, if you got a smoker, set it on low. 180, 200. Put your pepper corns on a baking sheet. Set them on there for a couple of hours. They're done. So we're going to transfer this to our hot oven and let this finish cooking, the bacon to finish cooking. And this is actually going to be one of our dishes today. Just a rustic onion, bacon, potato meal, and that's it. Now we're going to start on our um, corn dish. Um, this is going to be a super good dish. It's just like a sort of a rustic cream style corn we're done. Bumped up, beefed up a little bit, go excellent with the potato dish. I got my pan on about medium. And here's how I usually cut corn off. I'll take a sheet pan so it don't make a mess. I know you can get fancy corn cutters. I'm still a knife top guy. Sharp knife's hard to beat to me. So we want to cut all of our kernels off. You don't want to cut it plumb next to a cob because we need some of the milk out of the cob for this dish to give it the flavor that we need. So we'll actually cut all of our corn off first. Just have your little bowl, put your cobs off this side. Um, we'll take a second, sharp knife, it don't take long. The recipe calls six, eight years of corn, double it, triple it if you got more. Um, I don't think you could really mess this recipe up. Because in the end, you just reduce the corn, the, oh, there's corn in there, water. Um, you reduce it down to the thickness that you like. But you want to make sure that you cut your corn off like you would cream style so you get some cream. You can go back through your cobs like right there. There's a little bit of husk in there that didn't get off. Just clean it out. Um, one thing I did do, I drained my bacon grease. And you notice it's still on a thing. I don't throw my bacon grease away. I'll save it, put in a mason jar, lid on it, and use it for numerous things in the kitchen. I think most people around Eastern Kentucky and most places does the same thing. A um, couple more ears here. You see I'm just cutting them off. Get a little knife action. By the way... I know I talked about these new knives at last episode, but I've been using them in my kitchen for, I don't know, probably close to 14, 15 years, maybe a little less. Um, make their plenty good knives, but Wustoff knife is just excellent. They got an awesome warranty. They keep their edge. And like you said, I mean, I'm barely even applying pressure, and it's just cutting right through. So I'm going to use, I don't want a dirty bunch of stuff, so I'm going to put my cobs back in here. Maybe my salt and pepper shaker over here to the side. And um, give me enough room here to put that. Back your knife, a butter knife. Just want to um, get that milk out of your cobs like that. You don't need a lot, but you need some of it. So we'll go through and get all that out. And this is really what makes the dish so good because you get that real, you get the creaminess from the corn. And you'll get what's 
left of a kernel too. So you're actually not wasting by cutting it a little shallow because you'll that's where you get your cream and your parts off of it. You can see it's you got some kernel in there but you got a lot of cream. It's fine if some of the corn goes in there if you I just I don't know. I just don't like using a lot of pans so sometimes you'll see me using stuff together. As long as it's safe and you ain't mixing chicken and fresh veggies, you know, we're all chicken stuff together, you're good. Um, you want to watch about using the ground vegetables, you don't want to do that. You want to clean your cutting boards, wash your hands, and don't use the same, never use the same containers to um, cut meat and fresh veggies and stuff like that. And it's just unsafe and you're just waiting to get somebody sick. So I've got one more do here, and then we'll get started over in the pan on everything else. I mean, you see, it's just super easy to do. This is also how you make cream style corn. Like if you're canning at home, if you've never done it, which I'm sure most people's listening out there probably has. Um, cut it off shallow, go back there, and this is what I remember doing my grandmother. And um, it's actually Jonathan's aunt that's here on the show with us too. And, um, you know, we sit on the porch, cut it off, and um, mix it all together, cook it, bag it, and you got cream style corn. So to this, we want to add um, one tablespoon of butter, which like I told last week, most butter has a scale on it, so you don't actually have a measure. So this one calls for one tablespoon. And the skillet's going to be hot, and it's going to, oop. We won't be using that one today. Let's try it again. So, my hands are slippery. Okay. So we, you can see that. Sizzle. To that we want to add about a quarter cup of onions. On the onions, it's totally up to you. If you want it fine diced, chopped. Depends on if you want a big chunk of onion or small. Um, I'm going to just use a little bit of onion in today's. I don't want to. This is potatoes. Have a lot of onion in them too. I don't want to overpower everything with a bunch of onion. Just a, I just want that flavor there. So I don't want it super big chunks, but I don't want it where you can't taste it either. Again, this is a sweet Vidalia onions. You can pick them up at Fannin's right now. And... Um, Seen an awesome recipe I'm going to try this weekend about deli onions, and I may cook it here in the before long for y'all. Be cut it out, hollow it out, and put cheese and all kinds of goodness inside of it, and smoke it for two hours, and it just looks so good. So we want to get our onions melted down some, not not too much in there, because we're getting ready to add corn to this. So you want to cook it, I might turn it up just a hair. A translucent color like we talk about on the show all the time where they're just starting to cook through and change. Later on we're going to do a tomato dish that is just absolutely over the top. Freshness and goodness and cheese, Asiago cheese, balsamic vinegar and salt pepper and it's fresh crunch crunch bread, um, add your corn, the star of the dish, try to get every bit of it out, and this corn is so good, I ate some of it last night for supper, I ate like four ears of corn before I touched anything else on my plate, didn't eat much else because I was full of corn, this is a charred corn recipe, so we're going, and you, of course you got starch and corn, so it's going to char fairly easy. So we want to leave it on high, and we're going to cook this to you to chars up. You don't want the corn like cooked mushy all the way through. You want to crunch this whole dish when you eat it. You want some bite to it. But we're, the goal is to char some of the corn. So that's what we're working on now.
Now I'm going to add a little color. Um, add a little bit of bell pepper. I mean very little, like maybe a quarter of a large bell pepper. Um, the recipe don't call for it, but I wanted some more taste of summer. So got some bell pepper. The corn is torn. You just want to keep eye on it. You don't want it to burn, but you want it to get brown. So just keep stirring it a little bit and let it sit there. Just keep a close eye on it so it don't burn. Um, I'm going to add a little zucchini towards the end because zucchini cooks super quick and I don't want it like cooked up. I want it to have some, I want you to be able to tell that zucchini's in it. So don't add it yet, but we'll add it here in a minute. But while my corn is cooking, I kind of just want to cut it up. These zucchini are super nice. I like this size because they're not full of seed. And um, I make a pasta salad that I use fresh zucchini in instead of um, cucumbers. It's that size because I like the taste of it. Corn still needs to char some. It's starting to char a little bit. See a little bit on peppers and corn here and there. But we want to take it a little bit further than that. Also, now is a great time to add your bacon back to it. There'll be a little more grease come in with that. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, you want a little bacon in it, but you don't want to, you know, you don't want to overpower it. You want to drain your bacon grease out because you don't want this dish to taste like bacon. You want to taste the corn and other vegetables. You want the bacon to come from actually the bits of bacon that you'll see in it. So um, that's our goal there. It smells good. Now we can add our freshly ground pepper. There we go. I like pepper and I like it freshly ground like I mentioned earlier. We might add a little more on the end just to give it some color. You always need corn, always need some salt to me. That's enough of that. Our potatoes should be done fine. I like my potatoes a little crispy. I always have. Um, we'll give them a look and stir right now while their corn's still cooking. Let me get me uh, something out here to grab hold of it with. Because it's going to be hot. Let's get that over a little bit. If you could see this. And we still got a little cooking. Yes, I'm using the same spatula. I want it to stick just a little bit to the bottom. Because when it's sticking to the bottom, that means everything's getting crispy. You can see our bacon's cooking. We want to stir it around so it don't burn. Just a nice coating oil on the other side of potatoes. Use a wooden spatula or something like that so you can scrape it. Scrape the tiny bits up. Make sure nothing's sticking on you. If it is, scrape it up. It'll just be good in a minute when you eat it. So, that's looking good. It's getting close to being done. Everything should finish about the same time. Um, make sure you got a pot handle because it's hot. Put it back in there. And when this gets done, that'll be finished. Our corn is starting to pop, and so I know it's turning more brown. That's what we want. Man, it smells so good. So our corn's starting to char pretty good. I'm going to turn our heat down to back down to about medium. I'm going to take this off just for a second. So the pan to cool down somewhat. We don't want to... Um, we're getting ready to put a half a cup of heavy cream in it. And while that's cooling down, is a good time to add your zucchini. Like I said, by the time we reduce it down, the zucchini will be perfectly cooked. And if you add it at the beginning of it, it'll be a little too soft for my liking. Um, you might like it a little more like that. And this will give you a chance to let your skillet cool down a little bit before you put your cream in.
Now this doesn't look like summer, nothing does. I mean, this is a meal, both of them are potatoes and this. What happens if you don't watch out, your milk can curdle on you and that's not good. So we'll turn that down. We're going to slowly add our cream. And at the same time, you want to add your cream of your corn and stuff. And your heavy cream on that. Okay. Set this to the side. Stir all this in good. We'll taste it towards you and add salt and pepper as needed. If you wanted to kick this up some, you could. You could add the Cajun seasoning, you add a touch of cayenne. I mean, today I don't, I don't want to do that. We do a lot of spicy stuff here. I kind of like just want the flavors. Salt and pepper, rustic, taste the vegetables. And um, that's what we're doing today. So you really need to pay super attention to this from this point out because now you got your cream in there and we want to turn it just enough up to finish cooking out and you need to keep it stirred really good you want to add a little extra butter you could um, we just want to cook this down but it's going to take a little bit of time to cook it, cook it down and get it where you want it get it to your desired thickness and how you like it main thing get the zucchini cooked to where you like the texture of it and you could about eat it at any time. Okay, next is a dish that I like quite a bit. Um, I turned our corn dish, it's done, the potatoes are done. We're going to make our tomato salad that I like. Um, toaster bread will be complete and we'll plate it up. Okay, so I got a mixture of firm red tomatoes and yellow tomatoes you um, you don't want a real soft tomato because it will kind of um, mush up and not hold its shape as good so tops bottoms off the yellow one's probably a little softer than I like but I wanted um, I wanted some texture to it um, you could use grape tomatoes if you don't have fresh tomatoes no problem um, they'll work just as good. I've made it with those. Take a little bit of the core on out here. Just watch yourself with a knife. Okay. The green part of it. Do the same thing on this one. You still have more core down in there, but that's the green part. Okay. Simple, but so good. You've, we've had the classic caprese, or however you want to pronounce it, salad, mozzarella, balsamic vinaigrette, tomatoes, basil. This is a little bit different. I like chopping my tomatoes up using Asiago cheese, which is sharper cheese and Parmesan, really good. Some balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, and basil. Sort of same concept, just a few different twists to it. Um, I, I prefer this. This is one of my dishes that I like. So um, you want kind of sort of bite-sized tomatoes. You don't want them super small. Um, again, this is rustic. Serve it in the dish. Serve it as a cold side in these hot summer days. Um, super good. It's even good on winter months. But I like it best in summer because it brings the freshness to the day. Um, that's good. We're actually going to um, slide our cutting board to edge, put our bowl in here, and slide some of these off in there. Just use your knife. There we got a food, I call it food slider thing. Slide under your food a little. Kind of like some cheese graters have them too. Um, take your yellow tomato. And these knives, I know I keep going back to a good knife, but I'm barely having to slice. It's so sharp. I mean, it's hard to cut tomato without a decent knife. 
that you don't have to press down and you bust it. I mean, that's just, I'm barely laying a knife on it. It's just cutting it right up. Watch yourself and don't cut yourself up. I have cut myself. Always wash your hands, your cutting boards. This cutting board has been washed, knife's been washed. Um, each time that we take a break, we always clean up a little bit after yourself. You can always see that some stuff's moved around, so keep your workstation clean, as they say. Um, I want to move this out of my way so we don't get tomato juice everywhere. Take it, put it in the sink, wipe my hands off. Okay. Now the fun part. Got a bowl of tomatoes. I'm going to start coarsely salting it. We'll mix it around. Add a little more salt. Salt brings the flavor out of the tomatoes. We want to add our peppers, or ground pepper. And you can do this the same time. You don't have to. You can add salt, mix it, pepper, mix it. I just, did it this way. I don't know why. Okay. So that gets that fresh basil. I got a herb garden at home. Numerous herbs. Go out getting them anytime I want to. I do cook with them often. This actually come from a local grocery store today. I went and got it to show you how easy it is to get fresh herbs. Um, you can plant this in a bigger pot, put it on your windowsill and have fresh basil all year long. Always get your herbs before they bloom out because when they bloom a lot of times it makes them bitter and you don't want that. So take it, not call them cutting ribbons out of it, bottle them up, take your knife, it's only cut tomatoes and make little ribbons You want to taste the basil in it. Don't cut it up so fine you can't see it and taste it. Um, add that to it. You can always add more if you want to in a minute. After you mix it up. Okay. So we got our basil. Let's mix it up and see our ratio of how it looks. It depends on how many tomatoes you use. You might want to add more basil. Um, I think you can pretty much get a bite of basil every time there. What more you can do it, we'll put some more on as garnish in a minute. Now my favorite part, I personally can't get too much cheese. I like cheese though. Um, I like the coarse side of my grater because I like tasting the cheese in it. I'm going to grate some fresh Asiago cheese in here. Um, you can do it this way and sometimes I'll even turn it around and give me some flakes in it. Just flake it off in it like that. Um, just keep turning it where it ain't huge slices. I love this dish. So you can only see what I did there. Make some flakes, grate it, whatever your preference. I'm going to use some of this on the corn dish in a minute, so I don't want to use it all right now. Got some good balsamic vinaigrette, or balsamic vinegar here. I'm going to add a little bit of it to it. Don't take no whole lot. Find my olive oil because we're going to need it in a minute. Extra light virgin olive oil. Um, I keep some at home that's actually a good quality olive oil, extra virgin light. That's good for salads and stuff. So, anyhow, I like this. I like the cheese. I like the balsamic vinegar that's in there with the olive oil. Um, I can tell it needs more pepper. I like pepper in it. This makes a great little cold dish. We'll go along with this meal today. Okay, so we're going to set this to the side and let our flavors combine while we put everything else together. Okay, back to the corn dish. It is cooked through. You can see it's completely cooked through. Looks good twist 
I am going to, and I shouldn't put my grater up, so we'll use a knife. I want to use a little bit of cheese in it. Let it melt through it. So I want to take my pair of knife, um, cut little slivers of cheese, let it melt a little bit in it. I just want that extra little bit of flavor. Grated in it. I'd use the same ones. So anyhow, let's put that in there, a little bit of cheese. You can grate a little bit over top of it. Um, turn your heat back on a little bit if you need to. It should be hot enough to melt the cheese enough to... And this also add a little thickness to it. And you'll get that bite earthiness of cheese to go along with it. So when we come back... We're going to toast some French bread up, and we'll put all this meal together for you and let you see it. Um, we're done. Great, great, great meal. Um, if you could, I don't want to touch the skillet because it's super hot, just come out of the oven. Our potatoes are crispy bacon. This is how I like my potatoes. You don't have to cook them this long, you don't have to get them this crispy. But when I eat potatoes roasted, this is how I prefer them. I don't like them as crispy, take my oven a little bit longer. So to plate this up, I do a few scoops of potatoes. Make sure you get the bacon and onion bits. Put that like that. Okay. Take me a few pieces of bread, separate it a little bit. Now right, set these to the side. Next we're going to take our corn dish and look, you can see the cheese. No more than cheese we put in, but you can see it where it melted in there. So give it a good stir. And I did taste for salt and pepper on everything. It's pretty good. We'll give it a touch of pepper here in a minute. And you can plate all this in one dish. Okay. A few more pieces of bread in between there, kind of like a barrier. Now, you can do this a couple different ways. We could serve it in a bowl, and I think that's what we'll do. If um, we'll get us a serving bowl. If not, you don't have to, but it's liable to run the balsamic vinegar through your plate, get your bread soggy, etc. So anyhow, you can see the mixture of the tomatoes and stuff like you want to. Throw you a couple pieces of bread on the edge like that. Let's it this way. Yeah, got a little extra basil. Sprinkle on it all. Basil's good on about anything. Got some extra cheese. You can even put a little bit on your potatoes if you want to, a little more on your corn. A little more on this, your tomato salad, Osceola cheese, like I said a minute ago, a little bit of fresh pepper on top. And I tell you what, this is our summer dish. Um, all these veggies come from Morgan County, Kentucky, so you don't have to travel a long ways to make a good meal. All of this comes from locally here in Morgan County. This can be made shopping within 15 20 minutes of your house fresh corn squash or zucchini vidalia onions potatoes the bacon come from here locally the tomatoes the basil everything so enjoy and um, hit fannins up for some fresh vegetables let's try this that is Absolutely delicious. Great meal. Enjoy. Remember that you can find the recipes on the um, website, MTTV, on the Mountain Rural website. Actually, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see where the TV and TV um, advertisement or the TV page is where you can click on it. And you go to the food part of it, and they'll have my episodes, recipes that we've done, David Bradley's and some cast iron cooking on it. Click on that.
click on that, it'll pull the recipe up that you can look at. Here in a few days, this one will be on here. So till we have them cooked again, take a kid hunting, fish, and go out and eat some fresh veggies, make something good, and enjoy your family, friends, and have a laugh. Thanks for tuning in today.